Hey guys, <laughs> what a beautiful day. I'm sitting here by my stream or by my pool of living water, which I excavated at the start of this uh, pandemic thing. How, how prophetic is that, hey? Opening up old wells and uh, here's my veggies. So this is where I'm sitting today. <laughs> I thought I'd just show you. You know, Jesus is just amazing, full of abundant life. And you know, our life reflects the abundant life of Jesus. Um, it's so great to be outdoors and opening up springs of living water. Remembering that from us will flow forth streams of living water by which he meant the Spirit of God. So today, as usual, I want to send, share some good news. But I want to thank you. I want to thank all of you that follow me on uh, this YouTube channel that have been sharing these videos. You know, we're getting like quite a lot of hits. And, uh, you know, over the last, I think it's five months once I started up this uh, channel, um, it's so encouraging to see it going out all over the world. So greetings to you wherever you are in the world. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are beloved of Jesus <laughs> and sons of the Father. It's such good news. We're family. And I want to encourage you today. I want to strengthen you in Christ, in the finished work of the cross. Today I'm going to be sharing some news that is going to help establish you your, in your identity. You're going to un like help you move into a deeper understanding of just what Jesus did on the cross for us. And, and it's very important that our whole focus be on Jesus on, on his life, death, and resurrection, ascension, and glorification. Because as he is in heaven, so are we are upon the earth. We, are in, we were included in him when we believed. We are part of him. Our lives are hidden in Christ. And, that, and that's amazing. So I want to share today about the work of the cross and how that work of the cross has set us free and established our identity. And when we understand what Jesus did on the cross... When we understand the, the great exchange of the cross, we start to understand that we can live in freedom and without fear. So this ties together a whole, whole load of stuff that Jesus came that we should be free by the Spirit and that we would live that abundant, full life. So the cross, you know, it says... Um, that we should take up our cross, you know, if you, if you want to be Jesus' disciples, take up your cross. And uh, we should embrace, enter into his suffering. Now, I want, to, I want to just say, you know, people, by the way, when he said that to the disciples in Matthew, and I'm going to quote the scriptures as we go along, you'll see them pop up on the screen. Um, so you'll be able to check this out, that it's biblical, it's important that our Christianity be founded on the Bible, not on just man's opinions or good ideals, but actually what do the scriptures teach so you so i'm going to leave that to you to be mature enough to check out the scriptures and to establish and test what i'm saying in faith but um you know it's good news and we need to get the good news of jesus out there what i teach and what i preach is, is the good news of jesus it's about jesus it's to give glory to jesus and to strengthen the church his body upon the earth so please share these uh, videos Click the uh, subscribe button down in the bottom right hand corner. If you haven't done this, turn on the notification bell so you get um, notifications of when I post new videos. And please share. Let's get the word out there. It's not for my sake. This is for the sake of the kingdom, for the glory of Jesus, to get the message of the gospel of grace out there, the finished work of the cross. So when they say when jesus was saying take up your cross you know the disciples had no clue what he was talking about you realize that he hadn't gone to the cross yet they, they wouldn't have known what what he meant by take up the cross but after he was crucified they would have realized that jesus christ was crucified and as it says in galatians 2:20, one of my favorite scriptures we have been crucified with christ so it's the cross of christ that we are called to take up we are called to identify with his crucifixion we are called to see ourselves nailed on the cross with him we are co-crucified with christ and again that galatians 2:20 says that we've been crucified with christ we no longer lived and when, it's, when it talks about entering into his suffering, it's the same thing. We, we've been given over unto death of self 
crucified with Christ, we'd enter into his suffering that we can also enter into his glory. That's what those scriptures mean. So I, I want to tell you, you know, when we do communion, it says that we remember Jesus' death. And I don't know about you, but I get just so zapped when I do communion, when I take the bread and the wine <laughs> and I think on Jesus and I think on the cross. I mean, the, the, it was just the uh, day before yesterday. My wife and myself were, were taking communion and I'm telling you, it was like I was sitting at the foot of the cross. I could feel the heat, I could feel the dust, and I could see. <laughs> I could see the blood of Jesus dripping down. It was beautiful. And uh, I've, I've just been having so many kind of beautiful experiences like that. And uh, that's our inheritance, that intimacy that mystery, that spiritual realm that we move in where there's no time space. It was like I was at the cross, seeing my sin upon his shoulders, seeing those, the, the beautiful man of God, the Son of God, dying for me and looking into my face. And I realized that I died with him on the cross. I realized that my life doesn't belong to my own, myself anymore, nor does yours. But I also realized the great exchange that took place on the cross. It's amazing that the cross is a cross. It's a place of exchange. It's a place of change of direction. It's a place where, where there was a transaction that took place in the spiritual realm. And we need to understand the power of the cross. See, we preached Christ crucified and the cross. That's our focus. What Behold the Lamb of God. The sacrificial lamb, the one that stood in our place, was he was subjected to what we deserved. So I want to talk about this, uh, this fulfillment of the prophecy where Abraham, by the way, was, was caught to go up to Mount Zion and, and sacrifice Isaac. But God gave him that, that ram, that lamb, in his place. You see, God died in our place. That, that prophetic picture of Abraham and Isaac was for us to know <laughs> that God would provide the sacrifice. <laughs> He's not like the old gods, like that God of the Incas and Aztecs and, and pagan gods that require us to, to sacrifice our children. He gave up his son to pay the price for us. And Jesus went joyfully for the cross. It says, because of the joy set before him, he willingly went to the cross to break the power of sin and death and the devil. Uh, he wasn't forced into it. He went willingly. But there was a great exchange that took place. I'm going to talk about that exchange when you can, and I pray even now, Holy Spirit, would you cement these truths into the hearts and minds of every person listening today? That they can be established in the security of the finished work on the cross. Something we don't have to add to. Something we don't have to add our works to. Something that is complete. Where Jesus said his last words were, it is finished. All necessary for our salvation <laughs> and inheritance was finished on the cross. Whoa. <laughs> Such good news. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Ah, uh, guys. So let me just say, this was the exchange. So Jesus became the Son of Man. It talks about him as being the Son of Man all the time, the Son of Man. You see, he identified with us. It says in Philippians 2, he gave up his divine nature, his divinity, his divine rights, and he became as a servant in the form of a man. So he identified with us. He identified with our humanity and he died in his humanity instead of us so that we should take on the divinity of God. So Peter talks about, it says, you participate in the divine nature of God. You see, Jesus participated in the human nature of man. He was fully human, but at the same time, fully God, the mystery of faith, so that we should be able to participate in the divine nature of God through the Holy Spirit. How's that? That's an exchange. Our humanity for his divinity, his divine nature that's come to live in us. See, our old nature was nailed on the cross. We now live in a divine nature of the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. That's why we can perform the same signs, miracles that Jesus did. Because the Holy Spirit lives in us. We have 
a share in the divine nature of God because Jesus gave his divine nature to us and took on our humanity. So that was the first exchange. Second exchange was it says that he who was without sin, that's Jesus, he never sinned, became sin so that we, those who believe, should become the righteousness of God in Christ. So Jesus became sin and we became righteous. We became holy, right standing with God. That's amazing. <laughs> that is amazing that he became sin. He became sin. That we should become righteous and holy and acceptable to God. That our sins no longer get in the way of our intimate relationship with our Father in heaven. It says that he became, he was cursed. Galatians, it says he was cursed. See, so that we should be blessed. And let me tell you, we need to live in expectation of being blessed. From the fullness of grace comes blessing upon blessing. That's what the word of God says. I live in an expectation of being blessed. I'm not ashamed of that. It's something that Jesus paid for on the cross. My blessings. He took my curse. And let me say, when he says he took the curse, he took every generational curse as well. <laughs> you don't have to live under the same muck and sin that your forefathers lived under. That curse, the curse of the law, where the sins of the, of, of, of the children are heaped, uh, sins of the fathers are heaped on the children to the third and fourth generation under the law, the Ten Commandments, that, that was fulfilled and done away with. He took the curse of the law and nailed it on the cross and declared it finished. So we don't live under those generational curses anymore. And if you're experiencing what you believe is generational curses, no. That uh, 1 Corinthians 5 says you are a new creation, the old is gone. You do not need to live under those curses. The devil has no right into your life anymore. Those laws and rules and regulations that stood against us were nailed on the cross. Hallelujah. And we can live free of generational sin. You know, if your father or mother was a drug addict, your, your grandparents were into the occult, they were alcoholics, you do not need to live in, under that bondage of those things. You are not cursed for their sins. You are blessed because you have a new inheritance in Christ. So Jesus was cursed that we should be blessed. Cool. Good news. Freedom. <laughs> Freedom, Lord. Freedom from every curse. Don't, don't get into that mindset that any Sangoma, which is a witch, African witch doctor, or any clairvoyant or anybody witch can curse you. Their curses will bounce back on them. You know, I've had many witch doctors stand up and say, I'm going to curse you, you're going to die. I'm like... Good luck with that. <laughs> Don't do it because the curse will bounce off me because I'm protected by the blood of Jesus and it's going to land back on you. <laughs> I've had hectic stuff. I've had people try to poison me, <laughs> try to shoot me. Everything they try is, is, has backfired on them. So when people try to curse you, it backfires on them. Not that we want that, by the way. We are called to bless our enemies, not curse them. <laughs> Jesus was wounded so that we should be healed. So when you see Jesus on the cross, you see he was whipped and wounded and stuck in the side. The blood poured down. His body was disfigured. And it says, as Peter says, by his stripes, by his wounds, we are healed. So all our disease and sickness was taken Jesus on the cross. The great exchange. So I live in an expectation now of health. And yes, the time to times I battle with stuff, but I bring it before the cross of Jesus and I say, Jesus, I, re I, I would remind those powers and authorities that try to rob, kill and destroy that by your wounds, I am healed. That you are wounded so that my disease and sickness should be taken on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for taking that for me. Thank you for bearing that. The other great, the other great news is our condemnation because we've sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Our condemnation was taken on Jesus. So he was condemned unto death under the law so that we should be justified just as if we've never sinned. So our condemnation, our guilt was taken away. So whatever sin that you've done, it was born on Jesus on the cross. And where you were found guilty, he paid the price. He was condemned unto death so that we should receive life, justified just as if we've never sinned. So as I say, he died, 
So Jesus received death, which he didn't deserve, so that we should receive the abundant life of Christ. The reason the Son of God appeared is, is that to bring abundant life, John 10, 10. I want to live in that abundant life. I live with that hope of increasing abundant life. And by the way, hope is a greater expectation of better things to come in Christ. Not because of anything I do, but because what he did on the cross. The more I behold him on the cross, the more I enter into his grace because of the cross, the more blessed I am. And the more abundant life, bubbling, overflowing life and joy I get. When I rely on the cross, when I rely on Jesus, <laughs> more joy, Lord, <laughs> more joy. You know, before in the Garden of Gethsemane, it says he sweated blood. You know, part of the curse of the fall was it said, by the sweat of your brow, you will toil every day. So Jesus sweating blood was a fulfillment where he took that sweating, that sweat, so that we should be able to enter into the rest of the Lord. That we don't have to toil to make our daily bread anymore. We should be living in an expectation of things going well for us. Whatever we put our hand to, like Abraham, who we are sons of. Whatever we put our hand to, prospers. See, because he sweated and toiled before the cross. He sweated blood. That's, how, that's how the anguish that Jesus was in. So that he broke the curse of that was came in at the fall of man that we would have to sweat and toil and now we are able to enter into the rest of the lord to hear the voice of god and to obey that voice of god and respond and see ourselves prosper in every way family business health life and that's going to draw people in they're going to say wow i don't know what i don't know what these people have got but i want some of it <laughs> By the way, people came to Jesus because they fed him, because, sorry, he fed them and he healed them. Then they encountered the living son of God. <laughs> There's nothing wrong in that, in people being drawn to Jesus because of the blessings, because he set people free. You see, it says he was punished. Okay, so the punishment, the punishment was upon him. So he's been punished so that we should be pardoned and forgiven. So in John, uh, 1 John chapter 4, it says a perfect love of God drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. See, a lot of us are afraid that we're going to be punished because we do something wrong or we've missed the mark. The punishment for our sin was taken by Jesus. We are, God's not out to punish us anymore. He's out to bless us as a good, kind and loving father. The other thing is that he, Jesus, died under the law. Under the law of Moses, he was condemned to death for blasphemy because he was claiming to be the Son of God. But he died under the law so that we should come under the grace of God. Great exchange, law for grace. He died under the old covenant that we should be able to live in the new covenant, the new agreement, not of the law of Moses, but of grace and faith through Jesus Christ. You see the great exchange, old covenant for new covenant, law for grace, humanity for divinity, sweat for rest, death for life, condemnation for justification, the son of man so that we should become the sons of God, the children of God, his wounds so that we should be healed. He was cursed so that we should be blessed. He was forsaken by the Father. My Lord, my God, why have you forsaken me? He had to be forsaken so we should be accepted. You see, because in our sin, God should reject us. But the, the whole spiritual power was broken. That power of rejection was broken when Jesus became sin on the cross. And he said, well, my God, why have you forsaken me? I know that's controversial, but think about it, the exchange. His rejection. He's being forsaken that we should be accepted and invited in to be children of God. Guys, this is good news. The cross is the ultimate expression of God's love for us. Jesus went to the cross because he loved us. And he wanted to break that power of that whole sin system. That was what the cross was about. It was breaking the power of sin and death. By the way, just before the cross... Jesus, the Son of God, 
stood in the courts and they brought forth a, a, a convicted rebellious criminal called Barabbas. And they said to the people, who do you want to die? This, basically this criminal Barabbas or this man who claims to be the Messiah. And everybody said, let Jesus die and let Barabbas go free. Interesting thing is Barabbas represents you and me. The name Barabbas means son of Abba. <laughs> you see, that's the exchange of the cross. The innocent one died, so the guilty one should go free. That is a prophetic picture of us. We are Barabbas, sons of God. To all who believe in Jesus, to all who believe in the finished work of the cross, have the right to become sons of God. John chapter 1. Oh, such beautiful message. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, I pray for each person listening, the grace and power of the cross. Ooh. <laughs> I pray for joy, love, and peace of the Holy Spirit. For the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but about righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. Amen.